Now, in terms of weight, we have lost quite a lot of weight, okay? We're literally talking like Say what? What is up people, welcome back to what is going to be like a day in the life, but of course with a topic inside it. And yes, you read the title of the video, ever since the start of lockdown or like the start of March, I've actually doubled my steps from like 10 to 15,000 to 20 to 25,000. So that's what this video is going to be all about, what happened in terms of the adaptations. But first, we're at Lidl because we are picking up some ingredienti for our post-workout meal. And yes, we have just worked out an absolute whopper workout at that. Here, let me show you. Oh my God. I worked so hard for that. That one, that went to under 145 to 144.9. So here we go, five, 10, 20, 25, 30, 35 rounds of 200. We need to now some weights. And just like that, we are done. I feel so much better. There was a lot of anger and stress that went into that workout. Man has been stressed out lately, but that is that ticked off and we are back in little and in fact we have already banged out a lot of steps this morning doing like calls and emails so yeah we're already at like 16,000. so a hefty chunk banged out the way anyway here we go post-workout meal and this is what i've literally been doing just walking down pretty much every meal to pick up the ingredients fresh and we're at the bakery and i think this is a sign i had planned on having baguettes and there's only one packet left so the gods are shining down and then we have run out of melons at home so we're gonna pick up another honeydew and oh baby another sign it is a good time when spinach is on sale, so we're gonna pick up a bag of that for the micronutrients. Thank you. And just like that, we are in, we are out, and now it is time for some food. And yes, you probably guessed it, but this is what we're having. We're going, oh, look at the crispiness. We're gonna go for three of the breakfast rolls. We have a bit of ham, a bit of cheese, some eggs, but of course, we have to have something else, which is gonna be a big ass bowl of cantaloupe and blueberries for micronutrients and some popcorn for some more volume. Perfetto. Still an absolute favorite in terms of clients and also my meals. So yeah, speaking of coaching, okay, I know I had a sale in my last video, but seeing as most gyms are open now or opening in the next week, I am gonna extend that sale. So if you wanna sign up to the team, then you will literally get like the cheapest price now and we can get you ready for the gym. But yes, back to the video. So yeah, ever since lockdown, I've pretty much sort of increased my steps up to like 20 to even like 25,000. Normally I would average like 10 to 15,000, but yeah, I sort of had to switch my training. So I've been doing a lot more ergs, runs, just strolling around, you know, my parents and stuff. We would go for walks down in the pier and stuff and just walking to grocery stores more, using the car less, you know, doing all the sort of lockdown stuff, walking around, doing emails and stuff. So yes, I have seen a big increase and it has affected me a little bit and I am gonna go over that in this video. But for now, let me finally actually eat a meal that is warm. And we are back in the hermit room all alone again, but that is the story of my life. So anyway, the first thing I noticed from increasing my steps was that my knees and my joints and my ankles really did sort of take a hit, okay? It was quite a shock to the system. And you'll see on my Fitbit, there was this period from like the 22nd of March or something to the 12th of April, which was actually pretty bad and had me dropped down to, well, it was still quite a lot, but like 15 to 17 thousand steps. So that was the first thing I noticed while doing all my runs. And then the second thing, of course, has been the impact it's had on my weight. But to keep the suspense in this video i will save that for later because for now i've been meaning to take you on a trip with me somewhere and boom here we go we are in carrick mines no we're not going to kfc but i've been waiting to bring you on a trip to woody's because i like to bring you along with me and this is literally like the most exciting moment of my week <laughs> and you're probably wondering what we're getting look i'm not a bro but i do need a new tupperware for storage reasons and i could have gone to deals but realistically i need a special one i need like a long sort of shallow one to fit in the freezer and just my luck of course there's pretty low stock in general but they don't have any they only have like these sort of deep ones and circle ones are no good again that's too deep you know what it doesn't even have to be a tupperware i think one of these boxes might do. These are huge though. I know I like eating out of bowls the size of my head, but this takes it a little bit too far. Okay, so that was an epic fail. Who knew Tupperwares were in such high demand? But yes, we are pretty much going home empty-handed. Oh God, if you can smell that KFC, it smells super greasy. <laughs> anyway, back to the topic of the video. You're probably most interested in my weight 
changed. So yes, I was doing pretty well sort of maintaining between like the 75 to 76 range. But then as I kept going with a new style of training, you know, the intervals, the runs and stuff like that, which I'll have you know, it weren't actually burning any more calories than like a typical raw workout. I like to sort of standardize or like cap the amount I burn per workout, but it was just the steps that changed, okay? And as I continue doing that, I naturally saw a decrease. And this is confirmed in the literature where there's always a correlation between a high step count and weight loss. So yes, now I am literally averaging roughly between 70 to 71 kilos. So yeah, we are nearly down five kilos. Say what? And to be honest, I wasn't really planning that, but I guess it's not too bad, okay? I definitely don't want to be losing anymore. So yes, we are down in weight. And speaking of losing all my gains, I'm going to lose even more gains if I don't eat some food. So yeah, let's get to the next meal. Yes, people, Familia Mexicana, donde estamos? We have some tortilla wraps, we have some Mexican style rice, some beans, sweet corn, tuna, and some sriracha. So we're gonna put the rice in the microwave, like so. Turn it on, and then you know the deal. Bish, bash, bosh. Two Mexican style chipotle burritos, but of course we need some dessert. And that is gonna be a whole tub of sky with some rice cakes we ran out of marshmallows, and some jelly for more volume, perfecto. Oh, and guys, if you had smell of vision this is real Mexican-y, even though that is not a word. But yes, okay, so a hefty loss indeed. And I'll put some pictures on the screen. It seems to sort of come off my abs and my delts. My delts got super striated, also my face just a little bit. But you know what? In terms of doing like the hit, the steps, the runs and stuff, I am literally the fittest I've probably ever been for a while. So yes, I may have lost all my gains, but still, my dreams for the Olympics, 20 whenever it is. Mo Farah, I'm telling you, I'm coming for you. And just for the record, I am joking when I say that I've lost all my gains and the cardio will make you lose all your gains. I'll probably go into that when I get home. But for now, we have come to the motherland numero sei, Aldi, because I have been hinted that apparently there's a new low calorie white chocolate ice cream out there that I want to try the Gianni's one or whatever. You know I've been wanting Halo Top to come out with a white chocolate one because white chocolate is the key to my heart. And here we go, the freezer aisle. I presume it's going to be in the usual place. Oh dear, okay, my day is not going for There it is, the white chocolate raspberry ripple. Oh my god, that sounds so good, but they only have the real ones. So yes, that's another epic fail. And yes, I did literally just drive here to get ice cream. But to be honest, there is another Woody's around the corner, so I might have a look there for another Tupperware. Bosh, here we go. If they had it here, I probably should have come here in the first place. But Woody's numero due. And I am praying for a Tupperware. This video has been a disaster, so... <gasps> Oh, okay, we're in better luck here. Here we go, so much better variety. I have my eyes on this one, a five liter one. The only thing, it's not very flat, but it's pretty big. It's like a box as well, though. It's not long. The only long ones they have are like down here, and it's only like a three liter one, which is probably too small. Well, actually, that could be okay. I think I've decided on my weapon of choice. It's better to go big than have it too small. That's what she said. But yeah, it's a big investment. It's like 12 euros, so man is forking out for this. And I am keeping it 100% real. We are stopping off at the Black Rock Aldi on the way home because why not? I have no life. And of course, man wants to check out for the ice cream. Here we go, deja vu, boobity boo. They have, oh no, it's okay, what's this? Oh, they have a salted caramel flavor, but they don't have the white chocolate one. To be honest, I might pick up one of these, just try it out. And there we go, so look, all in all, it wasn't a complete disaster. We got our Tupperware, we compromised with the salted caramel, but I do definitely want to try the white chocolate one. So yeah. And we are back and I can 100% bet you were not expecting that, but we have actually found a friend this time for once, Mrs. Potato. <laughs> potato, 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 potato. But I do want to go over the topic of cardio killing your gains because I do get asked quite a lot seeing as I do a lot, okay? Look, the myth comes from the notion that AMPK, a protein kinase like a regulator in cellular metabolism, inhibits the stimulation or activation of mTOR and thus MPS. I know that's super, super complicated, so I'll put some pictures on the screen and try to make it as easy as possible. But for those unaware, AMPK is essentially activated when decreases in ATP or energy results in increases in AMP and ADP, okay? To which AMP then promotes catabolic pathways to generate more energy or ATP, but in doing so, inhibits anabolic ones. So in layman's terms, for things that require a lot of energy, AMP squirts all over the body, okay, to make energy, and in doing so, turns off all this muscle building process, okay? So it makes sense that seeing as cardio requires a lot of energy, that you would be squirting more AMPK, and then you'd have less mTOR and less MPS, and that's how it would sort of ruin your gains. But let me ask you this, what also requires a lot of energy? 
weightlifting, okay? So yeah, as seen in the graph by Dreyer, AMPK is also activated when lifting weights. So does that mean that weightlifting actually causes muscle loss? Well, actually acutely, yes. As seen in the graphs where MPS actually takes a hit when levels of AMPK rise. But after one to two hours post-workout, once the cell sort of recovers from the breakdown of ATP, as seen in the graph, mTOR is turned back on and thus MPS is increased, okay? This is what you can see in yet another graph, all kinds of graphs by Damas 2015, that mTOR and MPS activity doesn't really spike until two to four hours post-workout. So, oh my God, that was quite a long tangent, but hopefully it makes sense. Essentially, if you keep stimulating MPS through weightlifting, and eating protein and stuff. Doing cardio isn't actually going to cause you to lose your gains. So yes, that is that. Now let's move on with this video. And boom, while we're at it, I know you like keeping up to date with Papa Murray and Mama Murray's diet. They are having a barbecue, ribs, pork, sausages, and lamb. That is why you don't have a full-on six-pack. But yeah, it does look pretty good. But I am glad to see they are including some vegetables. And this is their other carb source, cheesy focaccia. And they do have some potatoes. But what, you ran like 50k today, so he does deserve this. So give us a sick transition. And boom, here we go. We're out to get my dinner. But one more thing I was thinking about was to build muscle you have to eat enough calories and enough protein but cardio naturally burns far more calories and also increases protein demands compared to weight training okay so in that case if you aren't eating enough and replacing the energy expended from cardio then of course you would lose your gains but it's not because of the cardio it's just because you're not eating enough food in the first place here we go dinner location super value and for the record we have just hit 21.5 thousand steps but for dinner i don't know if you saw my last video with the recipe with the carrots but i am thinking of doing like a sweet potato sort of meat pie edition sounds pretty good i have the idea up here and then we do also need to get some cereal okay so first things first i have been on the cheerio hype and i know i do like wheat as they brought me back to my childhood but I've seen these and these again bring me back. Frosties, I used to have those all the time. I'd literally wake up in the morning, go downstairs, watch Yu-Gi-Oh! and like pour out like three, four, five bowls of Frosties. No wonder I was a fat kid. I have run out of jelly too, so I'll get three packets of those. And I have just seen this Slim's chocolate hazelnut syrup. I might have to give that a go in the future. And we are in luck, just like Little have their reduced aisle, they also do too. So we have the chicken Phyllis 185. I could go for like a whole duck, but 185 for chicken can't go wrong in terms of veggies i'm pretty sure i have enough at home but i do need some potatoes so we'll go for like two of those and that is pretty much it the exciting life of scott continues but here we go let's make up this absolute masterpiece of the gods here we go chef scott in the house so we have the chicken with a bit of this cayenne pepper and some tandoori mix in there as well then in here we just have a ton of vegetables so green beans mushrooms the leftover sweet corn some more beans and we have peppers in there and then in the microwave we have the sweet potatoes sort of steaming up nicely so the first thing to do is pop it all into a casserole dish the size of your head of course then add the sweet potato mash on top like so very easy and of course Finished it off with the goat, that is some fat-free cottage cheese, some low-fat cheddar cheese, and then a sprinkly dinkly do of some grana padano. Then of course, we have the oven preheated. Oh my God, this weighs like 10 kilos. Oh my days. Put that on the top like so, and you know the view. Bish, bash, bosh, the most epic sweet potato, chicken pie, whatever you want to call it, of peace, perfecto. As always, if you want to eat out of casserole dishes the size of your head, join the team if you're a client you know. But yes, what an epic creation this is. Again, if you haven't seen my sort of healthier, lower calorie version, go back to my previous video. But before we chow down on this, I already know I'm going to get one hater saying, but why do all the people who do so much cardio look so skinny? Okay, look, by only doing cardio, you will cause hypertrophy of type 1 muscle fibers. But they have very limited potential for growth. So the solution is just to train type two muscle fibers which have more potential for growth. How do you do that? You lift weights alongside doing your cardio. So if the main reason you associate losing your gains and cardio is like the comparison between the sprinter and the marathon runner, well think about it logically. Both do cardio, yet one doesn't lift weights and the other one does. So if you lift weights and do cardio, you'll be fine and you won't lose any gains at all. And boom. There we go, another one in the book. Honestly, I'm not too happy with that one. I'm absolutely destroyed. After yesterday's about five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 27 rounds of 200 finito. I'm probably not gonna do weights, I might just cool down on the bike. And that is a wrap, okay, the endorphins 
are releasing. And I did end up doing some weights, bit of bike, and that is finito. And speaking of finito, that is also going to be the end of this video. So yeah, firstly, I will actually put the macro pepper for those who actually care on the screen. To be honest, the salted caramel wasn't that good compared to the Gianni's. It was very, very rich, but the Frosties, oh my days. It's been a while since I had those, so they were good. But yes, that is the end of the video. Again, hopefully you liked it with the sort of science in there. And you're probably asking us, Scott, what's the plan for the future? Are you continuing on with like 20 to 25,000? No. Okay, it's not sustainable. I can 100% vouch for that, especially coming into the winter. You know, you don't want to be walking around like in the snow and all that type of stuff. So yes, over the past couple of weeks, I have sort of worked on tapering it down. I'm going to try to bring it back down to the 10 to 15,000 range. At the moment, I'm sitting around 15,000. So if you want me to do like an update video, maybe in a few months time after I've sort of lowered it down a little bit, see where my weight is uh, after doing so, then I can definitely do that. So let me know down below. But for now, that is the end of this video. Hope you all have a good day. I see you all in the next video. Boop.